In this video, I'll present considerations for the HDFS architecture such as hardware failure, large datasets, and its coherency model. Now HDFS comprises a large number of hardware components, and at some point a node will fail. You'll get some sort of hardware failure like a hard drive, network interface, some internal controller. It will take the node offline. You don't want that interrupting a large batch job in your cluster. And there should be no single point of failure. A non-functional component shouldn't take down the whole cluster, nor should a job fail because of a single node failing. The rest need to carry on. The main candidate for a single point of failure is the FS image and edit logs of the name node, which is the reason HDFS has secondary name nodes, checkpointing, and backup nodes, so that we can recover from failure of the name node. Now, a heartbeat from the worker nodes helps the fault detection process, so the name node can see that a particular worker node or data node goes offline, and a worker node that does go offline can be easily recovered from in HDFS. The name node handles this automatically and is an integral part of the HDFS architecture. Now, HDFS is built to run at scale on very large data sets, so the expectation is that it does handle big data in the range of petabytes if you have the hardware for it. It's not a software limitation for Hadoop and HDFS. Now, it can be in the form of many small files, which it often is, but we can also process many large files, like in the terms of gigabytes and terabytes of size across the cluster. Because of the distributed block storage mechanisms, this is handled efficiently by HDFS. And HDFS is implemented in a way to optimize the throughput of data, rather than just low latency file access. Its goal is batch processing of very large data sets and not user interactivity. It's built to aggregate data across many nodes and many files for batch processing through MapReduce jobs. It's almost in an ideal scenario when using HDFS, in that when you hit a bottleneck, usually a hardware one, you can just throw more nodes at the problem, more RAM and more disk space and more processing power. You don't need to worry about rewriting your software, your underlying cluster resource management code, when things get tough. 